Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Holmes, a game of shadows, movie, thoughts. So when we see the castle in Switzerland, I'm immediately thinking, are they actually gonna go there? You know, I haven't read the books. I, you know, I'm sorry, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Rest in peace. Haven't picked up a single one of them. Maybe I will at some point. But I do know that apparently that's the demise of at least Moriarty, and as I understand, actually also Sherlock. In the books, that was how it ended. You know, the only way for Sherlock to finally defeat Moriarty was for, you know, to kill him, and the way he had to do it was sacrifice himself in the process. That was the only way. And I thought they did that really well in the movie also, that, you know, Actually, I suppose in the movie, Moriarty has pretty much won the, you know, if they're going to have a physical fight, and I suppose they are, because they are by themselves, and Sherlock has just foiled Moriarty's plan, and taken all that money. That was brilliant. I love the, the little flipping book, you know, he has to check every single page what, you know, where are the numbers that I used to have, and... Of course, you know, and that was established also that, you know, he had these numbers, he put that in the book. That's like the only time we really see it, that's, you know, the only time, you know, and no attention is really drawn to it. And that's, you know, again, like the final reveal in the first movie also that there are these details where if you are extremely observant, you could probably piece it together before the movie reveals it, but most likely... Sherlock is going to explain it to us. But yeah, so I guess they're, no matter what, going to have a physical fight, and you know, the only way Sherlock can really imagine winning is you know, winning by taking Moriarty with him. You know, he can't save himself and get Moriarty, so he decides to. And yes, Gotta say, it is a little bit of a cop-out that he does survive. I think it would have been really courageous if they had actually killed him. I mean, he's the titular character. How many movies do you see where they actually have the guts to kill off the titular character? That would have been... Everybody would have talked about it, you know. But anyway, it was great that they actually kept the suspense. And I was also, you know, in the train... I almost believed that they were going to kill him there, you know, almost. But it was a great explanation, you know, that he <laughs> he sends the parcel of the breathing apparatus to Watson. And that's it, you know, no, no note, no nothing. Because Watson saw it, you know, and so did we for the briefest, the hint of a second. And you know, when he's picking up the package, that's... You're thinking that's what that is, right? That's it's proof that Sherlock is still alive, and you know he's like a uh, um, wife character, which I don't remember her name. What did the mailman look like? You know, and Sherlock is sitting there, you know, in the in the camouflage. It was brilliant because. Again, that was also established. That was established at the beginning of the movie, you know, with the... Yeah. I like that the relationship between Watson and Sherlock, it kind of, you know, it continues to be this sort of... I don't know, some people call it a bromance. I call it an old married couple because they're kind of... Well, they care about each other, and they're gonna follow each other's lead. And, you know, they trust each other, but well, there's gonna be some bickering and stuff like that. You know, it's just it's a fun way. It's a fun take on that relationship. I like the book ending of the, you know, the very first scene and the very last scene are the same. You know, it starts with him writing the book of what we're what we then get to see unfold, and it ends with him, you know, writing the end. And, of course, you know, Sherlock goes in, you know, reads the end, and, 
holds down, you know, presses some keys on the typewriter and puts a question mark after the end. That was just pitch perfect, you know. And yes, there is room for a sequel. There is the the door is open. You could even call it sequel baiting. Should they do a third one? I think if they do one, they should definitely make sure that they have a freaking brilliant idea to follow up on this. Because otherwise it is just not worth it. Because this I realize this isn't a trilogy yet. But no, it just this one really went as far as you know, they really went big and they had this big epic showdown between these two. You know, it it was you know, you have this guy trying to provoke a world war and you have, you know, our heroes running away from actual artillery fire, you know, machine guns and these large cannons with big explosive shells and stuff. I don't know how they're going to top that. I, and I don't... If Moriarty returns, which is, you know, really, there are, if they're going to make another one, I don't think it's going to be good unless they do either that Moriarty returns or that they have someone of a similar or maybe even superior intellect, intellect come along. You know, I don't think that they could really go back to something. And I'm just not sure that it would necessarily be... You know, because this isn't like a... Spider-Man Green Goblin kind of thing where, you know, you think that... Goblin is dead, but then he returns and ooh, he's dangerous and he could kill people. That's not what Moriarty is, you know. If he's gonna return, so much of his power in this movie came from being untouchable. You know, Sherlock could technically, physically go straight up, punch him out, you know, drag him to a police officer, maybe even try to kill him directly. But he's not going to be able to get away with that. Friends with the Prime Minister, you know, it's he's a big deal. He's important. And he has not been stupid enough to let anything, you know, let any details be clear. And I suppose they could have him return and have that power, maybe. Although, if people think he's dead, it doesn't... That doesn't make a lot of sense, but yeah. I thought that it was slightly ironic to see Nomi having to be rescued by Sherlock, you know, after seeing her three movies where she took really good care of herself. But I did like that, excuse me, Sherlock is starting excuse me, starting to, you know, kick the ass of the, the Cossack, the co Cossack, whatever. And she just throws three knives into him, you know, that's, that's pretty badass. That's, and, and, you know, she can kind of take care of herself somewhat, although he is a trained assassin and really good at that. And, of course, he did have a backup, and we have an extended action scene in place of this brief being so really she just she made the movie longer and she made Sherlock's job more difficult. But it was a fun chase, and I like the whole thing with you know the rope connecting them, and you know that's how he prevents the Cossack from running away for a little while, and then the Cossack gets a knife and cuts the rope. You know that's. It's a fun, because really, he's not even after Sherlock. He doesn't care. He could use the knife to try to kill Sherlock, but Sherlock's in a, a formidable foe, and he's not necessarily in the way. It's the rope that's the problem. I really liked the second-in-command, I suppose, of Moriarty. You know, that he really has this, you know, the, the, this excellent sniper, and he just... I th he has some good moments, you know, when they, he's trying to snipe 
Dr. Watson, and also that he just, he didn't care. You know, if there's a cop between him and his target, he's gonna take out the cop, you know, you were warned. And then he's trying to shoot, and yeah, Watson just responds with this big cannon, and it's kind of a nice poetic justice irony kind of thing with, you know, what's the first rule of gun running, you know? The... And, and the line is just pitch perfect, brilliant, just, you know, that's not fair. That was just, yeah. And <laughs> coming from a sniper, that is pretty golden. I like the... I, I thought that, you know, even though our three leads, of course, have to survive all this artillery barrage and running through the woods being chased by... You know, did anybody else notice just how determined or not caring these men, who I guess were all working directly for Moriarty, just were about their own men, you know, they're shooting these big cannons, even though their own men are running in the woods. That's... yeah. But yeah, you know, the, our three leads, of course, have to survive, but some of the other gypsies actually die. And you get these moments where you see, you know, Sim is really bothered by that. I personally thought that there was going to be a little bit of a conflict between Sim and Sherlock, Sherry, when, when when she realizes that he knew that Rene was going to be an assassin. But then nothing really happened. I, yeah, I would maybe have liked for that to be a little bit. But that's really one of the only. I quite liked Stephen Fry, a man who one might remember is in real life, I believe, pretty sure, gay, talking to the wife of Dr. Watson about, and, and stumbling through this line, albeit in a very British and very literate sort of way with, you know, big essay words about how, well, you know, yeah, I, I, I could sort of see how one might gather an enjoyment out of the, the company of someone of your gender. And all the while he's standing there completely naked. You know, not even thinking about that, yeah, he doesn't even notice that she's bothered by that, you know. And just, and her reaction to finding, you know, I'm the other Sherlock, I'm the other Holmes, there's two of you! That was really spot on. This excellent, you know, and that everybody's response in that kind of situation, you know, and also just you threw my wife off the train. Yeah. And Stanley is a lot of fun, you know. Where are you going, Stanley? And you know, Sherlock's comment about how you you haven't aged a day. I like how, again, with, you know, the, the, yeah, I already mentioned some of this, but how with, if you really pay attention, I think you can piece together what Sherlock also pieces together. Now, if, if you somehow have that kind of overview and, you know, intellectual muscle that you can actually keep up with the movie and think about, you know, the little notebook. I think you could kind of piece together, you know, I don't remember if they show the book exactly or if it's like the only one they show, but I think we see him at least looking at some different books and you could maybe tell that that's one of them. And I do believe we at least see Sherlock go over to the flowers. Again, I don't remember if it's like shown and drawn. I don't think they draw attention to the fact that the flowers are wilted, but you know, of course he, you know, 
I, th I think we see it sort of that you could maybe yeah pick it up and piece it together if yeah and that also you know this is a movie that you could stand to see several times like the first one because then you're going to be able to appreciate some of the details that maybe flew by too fast the first time around and some of the details that you now know the entire the history behind you're now going to be able to you know more appreciate you know because it is a very carefully written film i've reviewed other parts of the series the links are in the description box please rate and comment and hey if you like this video that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it